So what do you do when you're in an expo and you see an HP system sitting around sporting a new Core i7-8700K? Well, if you're Carl, who is a tech blogger and YouTuber, his links are in the description below, you grab a monitor, you hook it up to this system, and you benchmark it as much as you possibly can. And that's just what he did. He took the system containing the Core i7-8700K and hooked up a monitor to it and ran Cinebench. Now this is a good, quick and dirty, give you a quick comparison of how it compares against other processors. Now we still don't know the pricing and everything, but we do have a CPU Z shot showing, you know, the total 12 megs of L3 cache as well as the rest of the L3 or L2 and L1 caches, as well as a very interesting multiplier of 154 with a bus speed of 23.98 you can guarantee that's most likely a bug since the CPU Z has likely not been updated to support this processor in fact we know it hasn't but let's see here so he ran Cinebench R15 which gave us a single core rating of 196 CB and a multi core rating of 1230 now these numbers in themselves are not that useful unless you can able to compare it to other processors to give you an idea of how it performs relatively speaking so this morning we ran a few benchmarks on our stock clocked i7 6800K and our stock clocked Ryzen 7 1700 and before anybody freaks out yes the Ryzen 7 1700 had DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM so our results as it stands shows the i7 8700K is definitely the pack leader when it comes to single core performance outperforming the 6800K and the 1700 significantly, but albeit those do operate at much lower frequencies and the Ryzen 7 is easily overclocked and the same for the 6800K. However, reaching levels of 196 CB for single core is probably going to be out of the question for both of those. However, looking over at multi-core, you see the 6800K uh, is trailing behind the 8700K, so the in last, last year's enthusiast is not quite as fast as this year's mainstream when it comes to 6 cores and 12 threads but the extra threads definitely help the Ryzen 7 1700 maintain its lead at 1427 and of course overclocked extends that lead even further but we still have yet to see how the uh, 8700K overclocks so it'll be interesting to see and it looks like we're going to be seeing these numbers sooner rather than later and if you found this video entertaining or informative whatsoever feel free to like and subscribe and as always this has been Keith and we will catch you in the next video